sink. I also go through a bit of a health check, so obviously I'm just, as I'm working on it, I'm having a little feel for any lumps and bumps, and uh, just checking her eyes, checking her ears, have a little feel at a pulse, that sort of thing, just so I've got an idea she's happy and healthy before she goes in. And then Dee just has a non-float varnish on because she's an expert at school and we don't need a big float of varnishes. He's got loads and loads of harnesses up there to fit everybody. So. And obviously I'll have, I'll have gone through with um, Sally as the owner if there's been any problems with D or anything like that. Particularly if she was recovering from a surgery. Yeah. And Dee does like swimming with a toy. So what we do to start with, because she's had spinal surgery and cruciate surgery, I've seen that pass a few years ago now. I just like to get her warmed up first before we start asking to do any turns or anything like that. So, so you can give her a little bit of support as well. Yes, she can watch it. A little bit of support as well, just to get her going. I don't put a lot of resistance on Dee even when she's warm. I just like letting her free swim, uh, letting her do circles and turns and things like that. Because it is sort of possible to fatigue her a little bit um, with the old sort of push it to the face. I mean, Dee's a really good example of a, a dog that enjoys swimming. If I've got a dog that isn't too keen of going for a toy or anything like that, they're always going to swim in one direction, whether it's towards the ramp or towards the road. So I just tend to work around them. And I said, I don't do a lot of manipulation on Dee because she, she does a lot, she does enough work herself, really. <laughs> but with a dog that will only swim towards the ramp, I'll just start manipulating that way. So I'll encourage them to kick a little bit harder. I can get them to a duck or a duck a little bit more. I can put a little bit of pressure on the back of the stifle as they kick so we put a little bit of power through the extension through the hamstrings. That's what they want. We're working at shoulders and elbows. Obviously, circling is a good way to improve tone that way and to free things off. But even with a dog, in fact, I'll just show you Dee. Even with a dog that's not bothered about chasing the toy but wants to swim towards the owner, I just tend to put a little bit of a turn on like that. So you can see the difference with the front legs. I'll bring her a bit closer, you'll see. So we go from a normal movement to there. So we've got a little bit of abduction on the right hand side. And that can be enough to free off shoulder joints and to work around the elbows as well. Yeah. I'm just having to do the same with the back end a little bit. You can get abduction that way. Or just some little tilt. Yeah. Good girl. She's a little bit stiffer on one side, so I'm trying to work that side as well. She's a bit tighter when she turns to the left. So try and encourage it to turn that way a little bit more and give herself a little bit more freeness in the spine as well. Come on, Dee's. Come on. Good girl. Good girl. You can see she's freed off quite a bit more now in her spine. That really is.
pace though. If I slow it down, you see it becomes a little bit more uncoordinated. We're starting to think about the speed placement. So it's not going to try anything back. Imagine that was a dog who's just come out of the sky for surgery. The water's probably about where I was actually having a little bit higher for sky for surgery, so just the absorbing sky for. But we're just working at a steady pace there. I'll slow down a little bit more. It's going to show that's going to have just a good placement there. So you see, you get quite good sky for reflection at that speed and that depth of water. Do too now. Oh, yeah. What's it going now? <laughs> What's it going now? 